Hello, kiddos. Well, you're not kiddos, you're students, you're young adults. Today, we are speaking about our lesson four, our notating and reading and performing rhythms, okay? So it talks through your vocabulary, your fancy vocabulary would be notation, which is the method of writing down music. So what's written down is the notation. And we're gonna be talking about time signature today. This is gonna make your brain go And it's okay, we're working through it, okay? So we are gonna understand the basics of rhythm. Start using it as well. So notating rhythm. Rhythm. So in the last lesson, you learned about how the division of the beats into music and measures and all of that works. This particular one, we are going to be learning about how to read the rhythms, which most of you already know how to do this. This is review. It's good. You're golden. Okay. The way we write it down is the notation of the music. If you're writing down music, you're notating it. Okay. If I say, hey, the notation in measure three, you're, you're not playing it correctly. That means the way it's written, you're not playing it or singing it correctly, okay? Um, most common types of musical notes are your whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, and we, we, we know 16th notes. They're not here yet, but we know 16th notes as well, okay? Um, underneath these fancy notes is how many each how many each note get? How many beats each note gets? Um, let's see the most common types of musical notes. It's very common for the the quarter note to have the beat, and we know that we we played or sang through four four constantly. Okay, there's where our beat lies. This particular unit is going to be talking about the different types of meters. Okay. So the relationship between these notes that it's asking you is that you start with your whole note and then you push down and it, it halves the beat every time. Okay. That is the basis for what's going on is that it halves the beat. Okay. So a quarter note is twice the length of an eighth note. Half note is twice the length of a quarter note. Whole note is to two times half note. Okay. Now you can put those in any combination to complete your measure. Okay. <laughs> now the different parts of the note is the note head, the stem, and then the little flag. Okay. The flag is going to indicate anything smaller than a quarter note. Okay. The note head obviously is going to tell you whether you hold it out for longer or you hold it for shorter. Okay. The note head will be on the line or in the space. i to keep those very important. Okay. When you put eighth notes together in a measure, if they're right next to each other, they're going to have that bar across it's still an eighth note. They just want to denote that it's one beat together. That's why they, they put that bar there. Um, we'll move down to time signature. All right. So on the first line of everything that you're looking at, there's several things you got to pay attention for right now. We're talking about time signature. Okay. It's going to tell us how many beats are in the measure and what note gets that beat. Okay. For our usual four, four, it's up there in the right hand side. Okay. You have four beats in the measure and the quarter note gets the beat because there are four, four quarter notes in the measure. Okay. Let's see this. So there's an exception is that if the bottom number is eight, so if the bottom number is an eight, the eighth note takes the beat. Okay. And this, this particular eight is a compound meter. We, we spoke about that in lesson three. Okay. Compound meter being that it's broken up into threes, right? So dun, 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 dun. So that's, if you're talking six, eight, there are six eighth notes in the measure and you flow it in threes. So six, eight, I conduct it in what? Conduct it in two, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Generally, when they write six, eight, they don't bar the eighth notes because they want you to see that the eighth notes are the beat. If they're going to bar the eighth notes and they're the same 
Like if they're going to tie them together, they just write it as a quarter note. Okay. Um, nine eight time would mean nine eighth notes. Okay. But you would have three distinct eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. That gives you your compound meter. The March King Cotton by Sousa is written in 6 8. Okay. In all my years, 9 8, they don't generally use it. They'll use 6 8, where, where it's a little easier to use. Most marches are either written in cut time or 6 8. Okay. Cut time is like 2 2. You take everything and you cut it. Okay. So we're looking at these here. You have your 2 4, 2 beats, right? In the measure, quarter note gets the beat. 3 4, same thing. 3 Three beats, quarter note gets it. Four, four or common time, four beats, quarter note gets the beat. Now we're moving down to our more complex time signatures. You've got your two, two, which is two beats, half note gets the beat. Cut time, okay, cut everything in that. Six, eight, six, eight notes, nine, eight, nine, eight notes, okay. As an example, how time signatures and meters are related, considering the time signature for 6-8 time. So since 6-8 time has two distinct beats with it, with three-eighth notes each, you already know several important things about it, okay? Because there are technically two beats in each measure, remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, it indicates a duple meter. So basically you got your, your two beats, bump, 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 bump. okay? Now, each of those can be divided into three. I know. Okay. But that doesn't mean that the beat changes. It changes from a one, two, three, four to a bum, 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 bum. Makes it more of like a sailor. I always thought about six, eight as like you're sailing the open seas and you're a pirate. I don't know. All right. So the key to understanding this notation is being able to perform these rhythms consistently, okay? Um, you're already comfortable with it. You've sang them, you've played them, you just don't know what it looks like on paper all the time, but you've done it. Uh, we've played 6-8, we've played cut time, we've played, we've played and sang all of those, okay? Um, let's see, maybe we should find a book. Okay, so then it moves on to our listening exercises. It wants you to find the rhythm. So you're gonna go ahead and play that. And so this listening exercise is for one to three. Okay, so it wants you to match the notes to that particular listening exercise up there. Okay, listening exercise one to three, select the correct letter for the rhythm that you hear. Which do you hear? Do you hear bum, bum? Or do you hear bum, bum, bum? Okay? This is that critical listening that I wanted you guys to work on. There is a part when you move further in music that you will have to take something called oral perception. Now, this is where the director or teacher that is teaching you this will ask you to sight read rhythms. They will ask, they will play a rhythm for you and you have to notate it. Or they will just walk up to the piano once you get further, play a chord, and you will have to tell them what that chord is, okay? The importance of that is that you are understanding music at a whole nother level. There's a whole nother level to music that some of, we, we haven't really ventured into yet, which is great that we get to do it now, okay? And this is something that we will continue to do. So make sure that if you're having trouble at this point, that you talk to me about it and we can work through some of these different things that, that may be giving you trouble. Okay. So this is lesson four, notating, reading and performing rhythms. I will see you guys all for lesson five.